So another tool um, that's really important is the tool of limit setting. And limit setting is important for a lot of reasons. Um, limits really um, show your kids that, that you really care. Kids need limits to feel safe. They need limits to feel secure. Kids need limits to learn how to set healthy boundaries and limits for themselves in their life. You know, they actually learn that skill by the limits we set. So you want to um, make sure to be doing that in your home. Kids with ADHD or autism want to be independent. Try Goalie, the visual scheduler that guides them through routines so you don't have to. Goalie, reinventing routines. Parents kind of know this, but a lot of parents have a hard time doing it. Or they want to do it, but they actually don't know how to do it. And so the good news is today we're going to give you the one, two, three plan for limit setting. It's actually done in three very simple and easy steps. But before we get there, you need to set this up right in your house. And so what you need to do is you need to decide the rules of your home. And the rules of your home are based upon your values. And oftentimes parents have these rules, but they don't actually communicate the rules to their kids or they don't communicate the reason for the rules. It's really important that your kids know the rules, not in the middle of a problem, because then they can't hear the rule, but at a calm time. And if it's a good rule, and usually our rules are good, they're, they're there for a reason, they make sense, we want to explain it to them in the language that's appropriate for their developmental age. So for instance, you know, the rule in our house is no hitting because hitting hurts. Um, and it's our job to keep you safe. It's our job to keep your siblings safe. It's our job to keep the children in our house safe. Hitting isn't respectful. In our home, we value treating each other with respect, right? It doesn't mean your kids are never going to hit, but at least they know. That, that appeals to them. Yeah, they want to be safe. They do want that. So it's the buy-in. So we want to make sure to explain the rules. Um, and then we have to be really consistent with our rules and we have to follow through. And so the, the three simple steps are this. For families living with ADHD or autism, preventing meltdowns is everything. Goalie reduces stress by enabling kids to complete routines independently. Goalie, reinventing routines. Because um, even when we set the rules and limits, we know kids, they're going to push, they're going to test, and we need to be prepared with the one, two, three plan. And the three steps are really, you already know two of them, actually. The first step is empathy, which we just talked about. And all you need to do is put yourself in their shoes and, and see it from their perspective and verbalize that to them. The second step is you state the rule or the limit clearly in a very simple, one-sentence way. And they already know the rule, it's not new information. And then the third step, you also already know, it's choices. If they're younger than four, you offer choices. If they're older than four, you could offer two choices or you could ask them what an appropriate choice would be. That's really good as kids get older for them to start being able to think and internalize, oh, what would a good choice? What's a healthy choice? What's the right choice for me to make here? So that's another way that you can do it. Um, and so that's it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a demonstration. Karen is going to be my 10-year-old daughter. And I'm going to do the one, two, three plan. See if you can, one, identify the three steps as I do them. And then the other key piece is to notice how I'm doing it because the execution of the one, two, three plan is actually key in making it work. Mom, I just got off the phone with Susie and you know what, she's coming over and she's bringing that new computer game. You know the one I was telling you about mm -hmm. that everyone's playing at school? Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. So can we use your computer? Oh, Karen, that sounds like a lot of fun. That, that, game, sounds, so that game sounds great. But what's the rule in the house about the computer? Mom, Mom, I used my turn on the computer before I knew that Susie was coming over. I, I, I didn't know she was going to come over. Mom, we really need to use the computer because, you know, this is all she wants to do. The only reason she's coming over is to play this game. Karen, I have confidence that you and Susie will figure something out. No, Mom, please. No, Mom, no. And I would just keep walking. Mom, I would oh, just keep walking out the door right there, right? Okay. <laughs> so... Could you see the three steps pretty clearly? The empathy, right? I know that game sounds really like a lot of fun. I know you'd like to use the computer. And I could have said, step two, I could have said, you know, you know, you know the rule in this house is 30 minutes of screen time, if that's what our rule was. I could have done that. That would have been fine. Step two, state the limit. But in this case, Karen is 10, 
And we have been over this electronics rule over and over and over and over. And she is very clear that in our rule, you know, the, the, or in our house, the rule is 30 minutes of screen time, right? So what did I say? I said, what's the rule? And that can be really fun because guess what? Then Karen is now consciously thinking, oh, I'm asking mom if I can break the rule, right? That can be really helpful. So that was step two. Step three, I said, I have confidence you and Susie will figure something out. It's just another way of saying, what's another choice? I could have said, you know, you and Susie can go play outside. It's a beautiful day. Or you guys can go play in the playroom. I could have given her those choices, but I figure she's 10. She and Susie know how to figure out what they can do. That's fun. So there's not, you know, you're not locked into doing it one set way. You can play with this. But the three steps are always the same, the same three steps. So what did you notice about how I did it? Because again, that's really key. How did I execute the one, two, three plan? Kids with ADHD or autism want to be independent. Try Goalie, the visual scheduler that guides them through routines so you don't have to. Goalie, reinventing routines. Calmly, calm, calm is key. You know, again, in our calm tone, it keeps our children in that calmer place. What else did you notice? Just calm but firm. Calm but firm. Yeah, and thank you for saying that. In fact, that calm but firm, you know, that firm and kind, calm approach is actually the balance that we want to be striking as parents all the time. We are going to always get the best results when we are in that balance of calm, firm, kind. Mm -hmm. What else? You gave her your attention. I gave her my attention, you know, in a really heartfelt way, right? I was there, I was present with her. Mm -hmm. I was really there. Who, um, who did most of the talking in this situation, actually? The child. The child. Yeah, Karen did most of the talking. So this is a key piece of limit setting. The, we want to be brief and we want to be clear. The only words that should be coming out of our mouth are the one, the two, or the three. We can get sidetracked and into all kinds of places and then we're, we're going to lose our effectiveness. Yeah. And I want to go back to the point about this mom being calm. You know, it's, that's easier said than done sometimes. But what helped this mom be calm um, was that she had the plan. Right? When we don't have the plan, again, we're in that stressed, worried, reactive place. We can see our kids asking for something. We can see the train wreck is kind of coming. If I don't handle this right, she's going to blow up and it's going to be a big mess. And it almost becomes impossible to be calm when we're in that stressed place, right? But when we've got a plan, the one, two, three plan, and we've got it down like that, it is much easier to be calm and confident for that matter. Was this mom going to budge? Mm-mm. Why was she not going to budge? Because she's got the plan and she does it every single time in a clear and consistent way. So those are your guidelines for, um, those are your guidelines for making this um, be an effective tool.